Okay, you guys should be familiar with this from the screenshots. Uh, this is actually the complete mission uh, with a few extra things hidden that I don't want anyone to see just yet. Um, basically, the mission starts out with players uh, line up behind a tanker. It's a multiplayer refueling mission. At least that's how it starts out, and that's what the player thinks it all. That's all the mission is going to be. This trigger here, activating attacking force, as well as all of these units here, are going to be hidden from the player initially. So all the player sees will be however many planes set up for multiplayer, the tanker, their waypoints, and their final landing strip. The mission is designed when the tanker hits waypoint one, it circles around, players refuel for an hour, screwing around, doing whatever they want to do. After they're done, they end up flying and hitting waypoint two, it activates this, uh, or this trigger activates the attacking force, which is this force here. Uh, basically, it's set up with a ZSU-23, a couple of tanks, and a um, Shilka. Sorry, I had a brain fart there for just a moment. The idea then is, as they're proceeding north, because not only during, well, not only does it activate the attacking force, I'll hit the triggers real quick. Uh, you see here it activates attacking force and the first JFAC message this this is the one specifically from the JFAC I named it JFAC message and you can name these anything you want you could name it Bob if you wanted to but this is a message that I put in and it comes up with the UTM coordinates for a spot roughly right around here where you see my mouse is moving the reason for that is by the time the player hits this point to here, that's going to give them a much better idea of where those vehicles are moving. Because again, once he hits this trigger point, these vehicles spawn in and they start moving down here to attack these tanks sitting and waiting. That again is the basic of the mission. The JFAC himself actually gets activated by this trigger here. You can see how big it is. The reason for that is after a player or after someone's flown this mission once they kind of anticipate what's going on here and they may proceed directly this way and that will simply activate the JFAC a lot or ensure that JFAC gets uh, activated now the JFAC himself you can assign it to any type of a vehicle you can give it any type of unit name. I simply named it Firefly just to make sure everything matched up, made it easy for me to recognize things, especially when it comes to the trigger systems. Um, you actually activate group Firefly. Because I named it Firefly, it shows up in Firefly. And that's what I wanted. Just again, make it a lot easier for when I'm trying to design a mission. And if you start having a lot of units, it becomes very complicated trying to keep track of everything if you don't give it specific names. Clicking on the advanced tab or advanced button I was referring to you in through the screenshots, you sit there and again this will normally be blank. You would click add since it's already added. I'm just going to hit edit. You have different options in here: perform tasks, start in route task, perform command, set option. In this case, it's a perform command, and we're going to set the call sign, and we're going to set it to Firefly. These are pre-made names simply because uh, if you've ever played any one of the JFAC missions, the JFAC will actually tell you verbally what their name is. Uh, it's been done by a voiceover actor, and since they're, they are pretty much need to know what the names are ahead of time to have the actor say all the names, those are all the ones you can choose in there. You can assign them any random number if you want. The condition, this is a lot more complicated uh, it's for another mission or another tutorial by chance. When I have time, I'll get into that. But for now, that's all you need, um, at least for this part. You also need to set a frequency. This is how the player will communicate with the JFAC. If you do not set that up, they'll never hear from them, and you'll actually get crashes. Just need to be, needs to be set to a valid frequency, FM, AM. If it's not set to a valid frequency, then your player will not communicate with them, and you can get crashes. Again, I set mine to invisible or true. Invisible is invisible to the enemy. It's not invisible to the player. The player will still see him. The reason I have this is because of the close proximity. I don't want the 
the enemy actually engaging my chafe, I can kill him before the pilot gets over the area. Immortal, again, in case something happens, player's not paying attention, I don't want this guy to be killed. The final one is actually setting him up as a, or actually setting him up for the FAC role and actually assigning a target. The reason you want them done in this order, it because the game processes all these in this order. So if you put your FAC attack group first, it's going to try to do that before it even gets its call sign frequency or anything else. And if it's a, depending on how the actions take place, it may be one where it causes a crash or where the FAC is non-responsive because you don't get any type of response from them because he's still trying to basically assign a target to, or assign target to the player. They can't communicate, so the FAC will never move beyond this one if it's first. The way you can assign a target, and I'll go ahead and make, uh, what I'll do is take this off real quick so that you guys can see the two different ways. You want to select FAC attack group. Now you can manually click on it and it'll automatically select which group it is in case you don't remember. Or you can actually hit from the drop down list if you, if you remember or you set it up, did a good naming scheme. You can just select the name out of it. Your weapon selection. As you can see, you have a lot of different options. You have your unguided. All your unguided weapons begin with a 1. All your guided weapons begin with a 2. You have bombs, missiles, air ground missiles, uh, different types of iron bombs, cannon bombs, heavy bombs, rockets, light, light rockets, cannon. I leave it on auto unless, I, unless the mission I'm designing calls for a specific type of weapon. Uh, and there's another mission that I've been working on. In fact, a mini campaign that will require a specific type of weapon. But for now, it'll just pick the weapon. Depending on your time of day, if it is at night, and if you look back at my posting, if it's in the, at night, the JFAC will automatically use the laser designator and the laser pointer on the target of that he's been set uh, to assign targets to the player to attack. And you can see I have a lot of different triggers, and some of these aren't triggers, some of these are actual engagement circles. These are a lot of triggers here. Basically, if the player travels too far in this direction, they activate a Tungusta. And I actually have other triggers set up that you can't see right now if they stay on station too long, because there's only five tanks that they have to actually destroy. Uh, if they stay on station too long, it takes them too long to destroy them, they're going to have a very unpleasant day. And it's designed that way because I want to throw in an element of surprise or if someone's just screwing around too much yeah, I want to make them pay. But that is the basic of your JFAC. Now you do need to make sure you have your JFAC has view of the target. For instance if there was a big mountain here your JFAC would not be able to actually see the target. They do have to have true line of sight. A way around that is you can actually assign a UAV, a Predator, Global Hawk, whatever and you can actually have your JFAC here communicate with a UAV and see the target. So he could be hiding behind a hill. That's if you want to set up a mission where the JFAC can be killed and if you want that as a uh, condition where the player has to get there in time to destroy the targets before the JFAC gets killed, that's another option for you. That's all for this tutorial. If you have questions, feel free to post um, if you have suggestions, feel free to post. If there's specific things you want me to go into more detail about because there's just so much information you can do with this mission editor, let me know. Or if there's specific features you want me to go over, let me know. I'd be more than happy to show you how everything works.